What's up everybody, TCM here back with another video and today we're going to be working on a Pico CTF challenge that I thought was pretty interesting. So I'm going to go ahead and bring that up. We were doing this on live stream actually. So the last few live streams we've been saying, hey, let's either do a try hack me, let's do some CTF that's going on. And there was no CTF going on this weekend or at least on Thursday. So we said, hey, let's do Pico CTF. It's always running and let's just kind of give it a go. So we came in and we said, hey, let's go through these challenges one by one. And we got to this web gauntlet. And this web gauntlet was really interesting because if you look at the solves for the rest of these, you can see there's thousands of solves. And then you get to the web gauntlet and you see there's only 448. So it's going to be a little bit more on the difficult side. So this is all SQL injection. I thought it was really fun. I think it's pretty interesting to learn and something that we could do pretty quick. So if you want to follow along, you can absolutely go to picoctf.org, sign up and go to the learn tab and go to the or the practice tab. I'm sorry. And you'll be brought here to the Pico gym and sign up for this. Go to the web gauntlet. You can follow along. It's fairly straightforward. So with that all being said, if you do like this video, please do hit the like button, hit that subscribe button and comment down below if you do have any questions. So here we go. We click on the web gauntlet and it brings up this little tab. It says, can you beat the filters? Log in as admin. OK, and it gives us some hints over here if we want them. But all we have to do is go to this link and this filter link, which I've done in a new tab. So when we get here, we have round one of five. So we're going through the gauntlet and this other tab here shows us or so or is our filter. All right. Uh, so that means we can't use or in our SQL statement. Well, if we're logging in with a SQL statement. If we just say something like admin admin, typically we're having something where it's like, let me bring up a leaf pad here. We're having something where it would be along the lines of select a wildcard from users where username is equal to and then here it would say admin, right? I'll make this larger. So it would say something like admin. And then we would go here and maybe it would say and password equals and then we just put admin in there and that would be our statement. OK, so what we're filling in here is what's going into these blocks. So we can see that actually when we come here and we go ahead and just sign in. You could see that it shows a SQL statement. So this is an example of uh, SQL where we're getting an error message back. So we're not blind, which is good. And you can see this came out exactly the way I told you it would. So from here, what we need to do is we need to think about how can I escape this? How can I get out of this? So if we put an admin as the user and we want to ignore the rest of this statement because we have an and which means we have to also have a password that matches right in this database. Well, if we want to bypass that, we could do something like close off this here, right? So now we've closed this off. And then all we have to do is maybe just, you know, end the statement. Um, when I was doing this on live stream, we just did a dash dash here and we can do that. And this basically just comments it out and says, hey, you know, this is the end of it. This is how I would typically do a basic SQL injection statement. So we copy this and just go throw this in and see what happens. So we're going to do that. OK, and we got on to round two. There was no need for the or statement whatsoever, um, but we got to round two. And now what's happened here, if you're not following along, is this is all ignored because this is commented out or because we have ended this. The rest of this just becomes a comment and this is all ignored. So we're just saying, hey, select from users where the username is admin and I don't care about the rest. So that's what we did here. Now, if we go on to problem two, we come in here and we refresh. Now we have or and like equals or dash dash. So what we need to do is think about, well, what can we do here? Well, we didn't use any of these except dash dash, right? So we can come in here, just paste this in theory, get rid of the dash dash to see if that works for us. I'm just going to copy this and on to round three. That one wasn't that bad, right? Um, as we get into the later rounds, it's going to get a little bit more difficult. So um, hopefully that makes sense. I'll show you in the leaf pad here real quick what I did. All I did was take this out. We still ended the SQL statement here. So it just took it and ran with it. So uh, we were good on that bypass. So if we come here now, 
We go back to three. Let's refresh one more time. OK, so now it's added a little bit more or and equals like greater than less than and then this, right? This doesn't change anything for us. Nothing that we have so far is in here. So guess what? What we just used is also going to work here. So the first three challenges, not bad. The last two are, I think, really fun. So we come in here now and we refresh. <laughs> well, we can't use the word admin. So if we can't use admin and we're trying to log in as admin, say we change this and we say, you know, I just want to log in as ad me or whatever, you know, um, copy this, try to submit it in here, sign in, and it says invalid username and password. It's just not going to work. What if we put admin in here? What would happen? Well, we could try this and paste it. And when you see it clear like this, that just means the filter took place and nothing happened. So other things that we tried as well, um, we, we tried maybe like a capital letter in here or two. You know, we could do something like that, push that through, see if that would get it. It didn't do it. Um, other things that we could do is something like a admin, right? And then put in admin again at the end. So this would strip out and then it would just leave admin here. Give that a go. And that also filters. So we're up against the wall with some uh, proper handling on how we're doing this for now. In the fifth step, I'll show you a different trick that we can use that I think would bypass this and the fifth step. But anyway, so what we need to do is think about, OK, what would our statement look like? How can we bypass? Let me copy these. How can we bypass this if we can't use any of these? So we're coming into here. All right, and we can't use any of these. So in this situation, I'm going to grab this and just bring it down below. What can we do? Well, we can use perhaps a union statement. So we can't use the, the word admin. Admin will get stripped. So instead of admin, we could say something like Bob. OK, and we say Bob, we close out Bob. Let's just ignore this whole part right here. OK, we have Bob. And then we could say something like union. And a union statement or a union operator is something that we can use to com combine two select statements. So we're selecting a table, right? And then we're going to union that and select another table. So what if we just go ahead and select again the same thing? We select this, and then we say from users. And then instead of providing a where username equals, we can use something called limit. So limit is just going to say, hey, when you return these results, limit it to one result. So we say limit one. So why one? Well, one is the first item, right? So if we're limiting the first item. Usually that is the admin account in the table. So if you have like one, two, three on your users, you might have like item one is admin. Item two is Bob. And you might have their password too. you know, like something like this in a table. OK, uh, so when we're trying to limit it to one. We're trying to pull down the first user and make this statement valid so that we can log in. So with this, we can try taking this and pasting it in, but it's not going to work. Even though we have the right idea, it's not going to work. So I'm going to show you just to verify. Paste and paste. It didn't work. Why didn't it work? Well, we have a spacing issue, OK? Now, th there are a couple of great blogs. I'll post these as well in the description, but there's a couple of great blogs that we encountered while we were going through this. One is Portswigger. Well, both are going to be Portswigger, but they are uh, SQL injection and bypassing common filters. What's a common filter? A space. You scroll down. How do we avoid white space? Well, we can add in comments, OK? And that will be treated as a white space. You see this forward slash star star forward slash or asterisk. That will be treated as a white space. You can also try doing that for something like admin, like that, and then just using this here to try to get it to comment out and then be fine. Um, but here we're going to try this with our injection statement. So I'm going to minimize this again. And I'm going to come back into here. And then everywhere we have a space after this, I'm just going to delete that. And I'm going to add a forward slash star star forward slash just like this. OK. And we're going to copy this. And I'm just going to go with this flow here. Just make it quick. And in theory, this should work. OK, so now it's all pretty fied here. We could take Bob, just copy this across. Hopefully this works. 
Live demos, always scary. Paste, paste. Did not work. Try this one more time. And I left the space in the select statement too. That is why. All right, live troubleshooting. There we go. Paste, sign in. Let's see if that works now. Congrats, on to round five. So I made a minor mistake here. If you see, I left one completely blank here. If you were following along, you saw that. That's exactly why it didn't work. Um, okay, so we're on to round five. And from round five, let's refresh. What have they done to us now? Well, they took away our union statement. So <laughs> there goes out immediately um, the idea that we just had. OK, so if they had some sort of different filter there and we were like, oh, yeah, we could still get around it with the union statement. No, that dream is gone. So I'll paste the new new in here and then we're going to come in here and I'm going to copy this again and we're just going to take this and figure this out. So I'm going to get rid of this part again. And what we're going to do is we're going to have to figure out how we can use admin here. How can we use the term admin? Well, there is something interesting that we can do. So if you look, and I found another blog on this, if you come here and you look at SQL injection union statements, um, I found something of value. So this operator here, the double pipe, allows us to concatenate. OK, so this allows for double uh, string concatenation. OK, so if we have a double pipe and then we put something in between and then we put another double pipe, etc. It starts to concatenate things here. OK, so that's what we're going to try to do. So this was a thought process when we were doing this on live stream is how can we make this work? So if we come into here and we don't want to put admin, right, but we can do something like ADM and then we could say pipe pipe and then we could say in and we can do uh, end that and just maybe try ending the statement. It could be something as simple as that. All right. So you come in here, you copy this. And hopefully this makes sense, right? So this is going to concatenate this statement and it's going to become ADM IN admin login and we should be good to go. So let's try this. Hopefully this works. Paste and paste. And it says, congrats, you won. Check out filter.php. This is where we'll find our flag. And we'll also find the source code for everything. So it's showing you how it's filtering this out um, for us in the different rounds. And this is really nice. So if you're interested in how the, the source is working, uh, this is how it's working here as well. So and then you have the Pico CTF flag. So hopefully that was fun and informative. Just a little bit of SQL injection practice. Um, I think this is always useful, especially when you're up against like um, a WAF or something along those lines. It's always SQL injection for me is always something that I have to think about. Um, it's not something that I'm some SQL wizard. and I just go through and, you know, type it out. It's like you have to take it piece by piece. What's getting filtered? What's not getting filtered? How is it working? And it's almost a puzzle. How can you bypass around the things that are getting stripped? That's also the same thing when you talk about, um, you know, cross site scripting or other types of injection where there might be some filtering there and you have to really think outside the box to get this to work. So those are my solutions. I'm sure there's other solutions that work for all of that, but those are the ones that work for me and the thought process that I had during the whole thing. So hopefully this video was informative for you. Again, if you liked it, please do hit the like button, subscribe, comment down below, and I will see you in the next video. Peace out.